The Rode Wireless Go 2 is better on the Sony FX3 than any other current mirrorless camera out right now, thanks to this XLR audio module here that comes with the camera. Now you can also do this with the K3M audio module, like with the A7S III, but this camera comes with it and it's especially handy if you're going in through XLR with one of these Rode adapters here, because you're able to use some of the functions on here, like the attenuator to control your microphone sensitivity. There's also some noise reduction you can do with the low cut filter and of course the manual gain controls here and safety track you're able to do here in camera. So we're gonna go over all that and more in this video. So stick around. Hey guys, Ray Valencia back with another Sony FX3 tutorial. Now, if you saw my previous video, we went over everything to do with the XLR audio handle. So we're gonna build upon that in this video. If you happen to miss that one, I'll link to it in the description, but we're gonna build upon that with this video. So let's dive into it. So my main reason for upgrading to the wireless go to from the original was the simple fact that these can record internally for up to seven hours. And if you happen to lose transmission between your receiver and your your transmitter, then you have the backup recording that you can export from the Rode Central app. What I did not know about these was that with this Rode Central app, there's actually a lot more customization that you can do with this kit. The original Wireless Go was one transmitter and one receiver for $200. This one is two transmitters and one receiver for $300. So it's a three piece kit. That alone justifies the extra $100. But on top of that, you have the internal recording and all the customization in the app. So let's go ahead and go over the devices themselves and let's get this thing hooked up. If you're planning on using another audio source like a shotgun microphone or something like that with your FX3, make sure you have four channel audio recording enabled. You should probably always have that enabled anyways because this thing is capable of doing it. So let's go in the menu and do that here. All right, first go to menu and then go to your shooting menu and go down to option number six, audio recording. Now you'll go down to multi-interface shoe audio set and enable 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, four channel audio recording. Now, if you happen to connect your wireless go to straight into the camera here, you'll only have two channel audio recording, but the cool thing is you can separate those tracks out or mix them together with the wireless go to. So I'll show you that in just a moment. If you were gonna control the mics plugged directly into the camera, you would go to audio record level right here. So you can also control which audio source you're hearing in each ear. So whenever you have the four channel audio recording, this next menu is available now. So go to the briefcase and find your way down to option number nine, sound option. Here you can control the volume settings, how loud your headphones are, and then go to four channel audio monitoring here. And you can see, you can hear channel one in your left ear, channel two in your right ear, or you can hear channel three in your left ear, channel four in your right ear. It depends on how many sources you really have coming into the camera of how you monitor this, but I usually keep mine on channels one and three in the left ear and channels two and four in the right ear, just so I can hear everything coming on because I usually have a lot of sources coming in or I'll turn those off if I just have like one microphone coming in and I only wanna hear that. So by default, when you're coming into the 3.5 millimeter jack here on the XLR handle, it goes to channels three and four, but you can use the input selector here on the back to make your channels three and four go up to channels one and two. So that's a cool feature there. So I have my two wireless go units hooked up on my shirt here, coming into channels three and four here. Now let's say I wanna connect another microphone in the mix and I'll connect it to input one here. So whenever you enable the 48 volts of phantom power to this microphone, that's the only time it's gonna work. Make sure you turn off phantom power if you're gonna be using the Rode Wireless Go 2. If there's no reason to be outputting power to these mics, then keep it off. So now on the back of the FX3, you take your input selector and you go to input one for channels one and two. So now this microphone is coming in on channels one and two, and then these microphones are coming in on three and four. So now I have four channels coming into the camera, but you get some different features whenever you connect this microphone through this XLR adapter here. So you're actually able to control the gain on both of these microphones manually using the dial on here by just getting one of these adapters and connecting it into input one 
then you set your input selector on the back of the FX3 handle here to input one. And now it's separating your channels one and two into here. So you have separate controls for each of these microphones. So this is the gain dial for microphone one. This is now my gain dial for microphone two. I can also control the attenuator here, how sensitive the microphone is to background noise, and also add a low cut filter here if you wanna decrease background noise like an air conditioner or something like that. So we're gonna go over that too, but first let's go over the devices themselves, how to use them, and the Rode Central app. So here's everything you get with the kit. You get the two wireless transmitters here that have a built-in microphone here as well as a 3.5 millimeter jack if you wanna use your own lavalier or something like that. But if you use the internal mic here, it comes with these little wind muffs that go on the transmitter. So they just lock into place like this. And unlike the original Wireless Go 1, these actually snap into place and they don't pop off easily. So that's an upgraded feature if you happen to like using the actual transmitter microphone like that, which I do sometimes as well. So that's a cool feature. You have this 3.5 millimeter foldable flat cable that is used for connecting your receiver to your camera. You also have three USB-C to USB-A type cables for charging the devices as well as connecting them to the computer and one burrito looking style Velcro case for holding everything in here. The transmitters are easy to use. There's just one button on the bottom that powers them on. You hold that for three seconds and you'll see the lights come on and then you'll see it show up here on the receiver as well. You can also customize this button in the Rode Central app to either mute or leave a little marker on the recording. Let's say you wanna mark a scene or something like that, you just hit this little button and it'll mark it. You also have this microphone clip here that doubles as a cold shoe adapter that hooks right onto the top of your camera. The lights will be solid as soon as they're linked and the battery light will blink slow whenever it's below 25% and it'll start blinking fast whenever it's below 10%. You can also see the battery life of the transmitter on the receiver here as well. So for the receiver, same thing, you have the single button on the bottom that you hold for three seconds until it powers on. You'll see the status here on the screen whenever it does. On the bottom here, you have the same two buttons that were on the previous wireless go. You have the decibel where you can adjust your gain here. You also have the link button here on this side. And then you can hold both of the buttons here to go between mono or stereo. You hold them for three seconds and you'll see that it mixes both microphones down into one channel. Or you can hold this down for three seconds again and it'll separate your microphones out between a left and a right channel on separate tracks. So this button here serves as not only the link button if you hold it, but it also serves as a microphone one or two selector. So if you tap it, you'll see that a little box appears over the one, or you tap it again and a box appears over the two. And then you hit the other button here with the mute symbol, and that is how you mute that microphone. You like this? You like this audio tutorial? Okay, all right, let's get back into it. Just drop that wherever you're gonna be using your receiver. Connect your 3.5 millimeter jack. And we're gonna start by going into the 3.5 millimeter jack here before we get into this XLR stuff here, just so we start with the basics first. So out of the box, your menu may look a little different than mine because I've gone into the Road Central app and customized mine. So let's go ahead and jump in that app now and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So go ahead and plug in the receiver first and let's go ahead and connect it to the Road Central app. So whenever you first plug it in, it'll prompt you to update the firmware and I recommend doing that. Next, let's go over the basic settings at the top here. So it'll tell you some device information here and the battery life as well. So this first tab here controls the backlight. You can turn it off or on. This next one is super cool. I didn't even know it had this feature, but the original Wireless Go 1 just had the three-step gain between negative 24, negative 12, and zero decibels. Now this one, you can actually customize it and you can go up incrementally between 11 different steps and incrementally go up three decibels until you reach zero. You can do that in the Road Central app here. And just remember that zero is actually peaking, so you never wanna be fully all the way up to zero 
because you'll start seeing that little yellow and even the red bar if you're too close to zero. And the red usually means you're peaking and you're losing some of your audio there. So you never wanna go full maximum gain in your receiver or your transmitter because that's how you get unwanted hiss noise in the background. So I usually keep mine anywhere between negative 12 or negative six decibels. Next you have merge mode or split mode and this can work with one microphone or two microphones depending on how you use it. But on split mode, it separates your channels in between a left and a right onto separate tracks. Now in merge mode, it actually mixes both microphones down. You can do this here in the app or you can do it here on the actual receiver itself by holding the mono or stereo buttons for three seconds. Now on this merge mode, whenever you have that enabled, now you have the option to enable this safety track where on your right channel, it'll actually record that at negative 20 decibels lower. So let's say your audio just happens to be set too high and it peaks on your main channel. Well, you still have the right channel with a safety track at 20 decibels lower and you can recover that info that way. Next, you have the customizable power button here. So this one, if you hold it for three seconds, it powers down or powers up the device but if you tap it you can make it to where it sets a marker on your recording so if you're doing a scene or something like that you can just hit a little marker there and you know where to go back and find that scene or you can customize it to where it controls the backlight on here you can either dim it or brighten your backlight on here I just keep mine set to marker the brightness on here personally it doesn't bother me so I keep that on and set this button to a marker all right, next we can connect a transmitter to the computer because this is how you actually enable the recordings and how you actually get the recordings off of here as well. So you just select on your transmitter here in this left tab, hit the gear icon. And now you can see we have the tab here to enable the recording. So you can have it where it always records, where every time you turn the transmitter on, whether it's connected to the receiver or not, it'll just automatically start recording internally. So you can have it set to always, or you can set up to backup recording to where it'll only record whenever the transmitter and receiver are connected to each other. And finally, you can just turn the recording feature off completely, but why would you? Next, you have this pad feature that lowers your microphone sensitivity by six decibels, which is ideal for using the microphones handheld. Next, you can control the brightness of the LEDs on the transmitter. Like if they're too bright, you can dim those down. And finally, you can customize the power button here if you single tap it to either leave a marker on your recording or you can have it where it mutes your microphone. I keep my button set to marker just in case my talent happens to adjust this and squeeze it and hits the mute button by chance. You can mute and unmute it from the actual receiver itself, but let's say I wasn't behind the camera or monitoring the audio at that time. So I just leave it set to marker, but you can customize these however you like. And finally down here, you can see that it records in broadcast quality, uncompressed audio by default. And that gives you over seven hours of recording. You can delete them here as well by hitting this trash can, or you can switch over to backup recording mode and you can lower the quality to standard quality compressed audio. And now it says it can record over 43 hours of internal media storage. I usually keep mine set to broadcast quality just because I want the absolute best sounding audio. And and when it comes to accessing your recordings, whenever you open up the transmitter, it'll show all your recordings here over on the left side. And when you select it, it'll have your markers listed here. And also it'll show you any place that happened to drop out audio. Although it won't be dropped out here because it was recording internally. It'll just show you where you dropped out transmission to the camera. So this is where that backup recording comes in super handy. All right, and then here's how you export an audio clip off of the transmitter. You hit export here. You can rename the clip. You can go between wave or MP3. I keep mine on wave 48 kilohertz or 45. 4.1. Earlier, we set the FX3 to record 48 kilohertz, 24 bit audio recording. And these are 48 kilohertz, 24 bit transmitter. So make sure these settings read this way, 48 kilohertz and 24 bits PCM. So these are 24 bit recorders still. So they don't actually record in 32 bit float. They still record in 24 bit. So you don't get all the features that you would with 32 bit float, which is kind of like raw recording for audio. You can actually go back in and adjust your gain in post-production. Let's say you clipped your audio. You can actually go back in and just say, no, 
I don't, I don't think that's clipping anymore. And you can bring that back down in 32 bit flow. So this doesn't give you quite that flexibility, but you can export in that format, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna put a transmitter here and a transmitter here. So with the input selector on the back of the FX3, you can make these two microphones, instead of being on three and four like this, go up to channels one and two like this. So that's what the microphone's set to stereo where you have them separated. One comes in on one channel, one comes in on another channel and you can go in and alter the volume levels in post-production. So that's stereo. Now, if you hold these for two seconds, you go down into the mono mode. So this is the microphone set to mono with a safety track enabled. So you see now the second channel is actually coming in negative 20 decibels lower than our main track. So when you're coming into the 3.5 millimeter jack on the XLR handle, you have the option between automatic gain or manual gain here on the handle for input three. So I have it set to manual and then you can use this little gain dial right here to control your gain manually right here. So if you need a little bit of boost, you can just steplessly slide right into a higher gain. So that's if you connect to the 3.5 millimeter jack on here. Now, what if you use one of these XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapters made by Rode? Then you actually gain even more functionality on the XLR handle. Okay, so now that we're connected to the XLR port in input one, we can set our input selector back here to input one so we can have our microphones on channels one and two. Now we're able to access some of these other functions here. You can do automatic or manual gain control here. I keep mine on manual because there's some other cool settings here as well. So if you listen closely here, when you set your attenuator to zero, so now see they're set to zero. So both of these microphones are set to the zero attenuator here. So this is for low sensitivity microphones and you can make them more sensitive. Now you can hear a little bit more of the background noise. So I have another video explaining how all these settings affect your audio on the Sony FX3. So if you need to refer back to that video, I'll leave links to it in the description below, but make sure you're subscribed to so you can come back and refer to these videos later and you'll be informed for future uploads as well. So I put on a little background noise on the TV so you can hear how this attenuator actually affects your audio. So Sony recommends keeping this set to 10 decibels for any standard microphone like these. But if you have a really, really low sensitivity mic and you need to boost the sensitivity in it, you go up to zero decibels here. And as you can see, now these microphones are really sensitive. So I can hear the game back there really loudly. I can also hear my voice like almost peaking. It's so loud. So next, let's go down to 10 decibels. Now this is what it sounds like at 10 decibels. So you see the sound of the game in the background decreased a lot, you can barely hear it, but my voice sounds much more isolated and you can hear me perfectly fine. Now let's say I set it to 20 decibels. And as you can see, my voice is coming in much, much lower, but also the background noise is pretty much gone altogether. You can still hear it a little bit, but my voice is much more isolated now. And this is for a really, really sensitive mic. This is for bringing the sensitivity down. So Sony recommends keeping it on 10 decibels here for any standard microphone like these are standard mics. So we'll keep it on the 10 decibels there. Next, you can also adjust the low cut filter here. And this basically lowers background noises like air conditioning and humming, like electrical, like building hum, or just overall noise in the background. So here it is set to off. You can also bump it into 100 kilohertz and that's what it sounds like now. Or you can go down to 300 kilohertz and that's what this sounds like now. So as you can see at 300 kilohertz of low cut filter, I was able to add a lot of noise reduction for my air conditioning unit to these same mics that we're using with other cameras. But with the FX3, you're able to add even more functionality to them by adding the low cut filter, the attenuator, the manual control dials. There's just all kinds of really cool stuff that you can do on here with this camera 
or with the K3M audio module, if you happen to have the A7S III, you can do all this same stuff with that audio module as well. So that just makes these mics even better on these cameras than it is on most other bodies. So now we have both transmitters coming into input one. You can also set it here to link these channels to where now input one is also coming on input two. And anything you do here with this gain dial will also do it to the second channel, or you can set it to manual here. And now you can enable the safety track and you can actually gain or lower the gain on the safety track here. So now this microphone is actually disabled. If you wanted this microphone to be on as well, on the input selector on the back, you would go to N1, N2, and then you would enable 48 volts of phantom power on this microphone to get it to work. I also got these little rubbery silicone sleeves that slide right over the transmitter and the receiver. It just cuts down on the little blue lights there and it also protects them if you happen to drop one. All the buttons and everything are easily accessible and marked here as well. It even has the little road O there at the bottom and the screen cut out here on the receiver. So if this video did help you out guys, be sure to hit the like button and leave me a comment if you have questions about anything at all. Shoot for the stars and I'll see you guys in the next video.